I'm going off script. <laughs> there are three parts to this whole message that I gave him today, the whole, ser the whole service. The first part was to remember those who were involved that day, 21 years ago, who died, who helped rescue all the people that were involved. The second part is about the patriotism that the United States of America had during those days, and I remember it clearly. I remember seeing the flags and the, and the smile, it just, just kindness. And the third part is how can we regain that kindness? What can we do to make it better? Nearly 3,000 people were killed in the 9-11 terror attacks. Yet an estimated 33,000 or more people survived. They navigated mountains of smoky stairs in the World Trade Center's twin towers or streamed out of a flaming pentagon. Some fled an otherworldly dust cloud at ground zero. Others willed their way out of pitch dark rubble. 21 years later, September 11th survivors bear scars and the weight of unanswerable questions. Some grapple with their place in a tragedy defined by an enormous loss of life. They get told to get over 9-11. But they also say they have gained resilience, purpose, appreciation, and resolve. At 9.37 a.m. on September 11, 2001, an airplane, the hijacked American Airlines Flight 77, sliced through three light poles in the Pentagon parking lot before slamming into the first floor of the building and exploding in a fireball, instantly killing 125 people inside the Pentagon, plus all 64 passengers on board, including the five hijackers. While the act was horrific, and all the losses of that day were devastating, structural damage analysis revealed that the death toll at the Pentagon could have been far worse, if not for some critical engineering decisions made 60 years earlier. Flight 93, carrying 33 passengers, seven crew members, and four hijackers, crashed in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, after the passengers decided to take over the plane. It has not been learned if a bomb went off on board, or even the destination of the flight. There is now a national monument on the crash site. Patriotism. It's tempting to remember a post 9-11 moment in terms of the grand rebuilding plans, domestic security initiatives, and foreign policy debates of that era. But what really illustrates the America and Gotham of those days are smaller things. The way we responded to the threat and chose to assert our American identity. Take for instance, the idea of police and firefighters as heroes one of the sentiments that I associate most closely with 9-11. By 2001, New York was nearly a decade into policing re reforms meant to battle unprecedented urban disorder, and violent crime was already down by 70% from its early 1990s peak. Because most of the city's neighborhoods were substantially safer than 10 years earlier, the new civic order had unlocked enormous buried potential. With the disorder of the recent past still fresh in many minds, this remarkable turnabout was hardly controversial. In fact, cities around America had rushed to imitate New York so that they could reclaim their civic life too. 21 years on, that America is harder to find. While 9-11 united us for a time, COVID-19 has been a national tragedy that divides, not unites exasperating a process already well underway. Far from being hailed as heroes, cops and firefighters are vilified and stopped from doing their jobs, even when they're trying to protect businesses and neighborhoods from rioting and looting. The rush of new recruits to the police and armed forces after 9-11 has been replaced by early retirements and resignations from forces around the country in a demoralizing environment for law enforcement as different from 21 years ago 
as can be imagined. Today, instead of impromptu memorials to heroic cops, cities sport murals and monuments denouncing them. The narrative of America as weak, divided, and paralyzed by self-doubt seems ever stronger now, especially with the Ukraine. The events of September 11th brought about an outpouring of patriotism that America has not seen since the Gulf War. Open displays of patriotism were evident everywhere as Americans nationwide began displaying flags in their homes, cars, and businesses. The aftermath of 9-11. Today marks the 21st anniversary of the worst terrorist attack ever on American soil. Here are nine things you should know about what happened in the aftermath of the events on September 11th, 2001. It took 99 days until December 19th, 2001 for the fires at Ground Zero to be extinguished. Did you see the picture on the front of the bulletin? That was found in the rubble, in the rubble. Cleanup at Ground Zero wasn't officially completed until May 30th, 2002. It took 3.1 million hours of labor to clean up 1.8 million tons of debris at the total cost of cleanup of $750 million. There were 20 people pulled from the rubble in the two days after the attack. On the day following the attacks, 11 people were rescued from the wreckage, including six firefighters and three police officers. Two Port Authority police officers were also rescued after spending nearly 24 hours beneath 30 feet of rubble. The total number of 9-11 victim deaths rose to 2,752 in January 2009, when the New York City Medical Examiner's Office ruled that Leon Hayward who died the previous year of lymphoma and lung disease, was a homicide victim because he was caught in the toxic dust cloud just after the towers collapsed. More than 1,000 people who have lived or worked near Ground Zero, including first responders, have been diagnosed with a cancer related to the attacks, according to the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. Most of the steel from the World Trade Center wreckage was sent to New Jersey salvage yards where it was broken down and sent all over the world for reuse. Nearly 350,000 tons of the steel was sent to be reused in small and large scale tributes, including 7.5 tons of use in the Navy battleship USS New York. For the first time in history, all non-emergency civilian aircraft in the United States were grounded for three days. The lack of condensation trails from jet aircraft caused the average temperature across the United States to rise by an average of 1.6 centigrades. A longitudinal study of 38 women who were pregnant on 9-11 were either at or near the World Trade Center at the time of the attack found that those who developed post-traumatic stress disorder following exposures to the attacks at significantly lower cortisol levels in their saliva than those who were similarly exposed but did not develop PTSD. The children of women who were traumatized as a result of 9-11 subsequently exhibited an increased distress response when shown novel stimuli, suggesting that the effects of the trauma were passed on to the children prior to birth. On September 13th, a worker at the site, Frank Seleccia, discovered a 20-foot cross of two steel beams amongst the debris. The beams were dubbed Ground Zero Cross and became a spiritual symbol for families of the victims and workers who cleaned up the debris. Where was God? I'm gonna read a poem that the author is unknown. It's called Meet Me in the Stairwell. You say you never forgot where you were when you heard the news on September 11, 2001. I bet you all remember. Neither will I. I was on the 110th floor in a smoke-filled room with a man who called his wife to say goodbye. I held his finger steady as he dialed. 
I gave him the peace to say, honey, I'm not going to make it, but it's okay. I'm ready to go. I was with his wife when he called as she fed breakfast to their children. I held her up as she tried to understand his words and as she realized he wasn't coming home that night. I was in the stairwell of the 23rd floor when a woman cried out to me for help. I've been knocking on the door of your heart for 50 years, I said. Of course I will show you the way home. Only believe in me now. I was at the base of the building with a priest ministering to the injured and devastated souls. I took him home to tend to his flock in heaven. He heard my voice and answered, I was on all four of those plan planes, in every seat, with every prayer. I was with the crew as they were overtaken. I was in the very hearts of the believers there, comforting and assuring them that their faith had saved them. I was in Texas, Virginia, California, Michigan, Afghanistan. I was standing next to you when you heard the terrible news. Did you sense me? I want you to know that I saw every face. I knew every name, though not all know me. Some met me for the first time on the 86th floor. Some sought me with their last breath. Some couldn't hear me calling to them through the smoke and flames. Come to me, come this way, take my hand. Some chose for the final time to ignore me, but I was there. I did not place you in the tower that day. You may not know why, but I do. However, if you were there in that explosive moment in time, would you have reached for me? September 11th, 2001 was not the end of the journey for you, but someday your journey will end and I will be there for you as well. Seek me now while I may be found. Then at any moment, you know you, will be re you are ready to go. I will be in the stairwell of your final moments. Love, God. How can an individu individual make a better world after 9-11? Spread some kindness. Some acts of kindness can go a long way in making the world a better place. Think about a time when someone did something unexpected to you that brightened your day. Weren't you a nicer person for the rest of the day because of that? I'm willing to bet that anyone who receives an act of kindness passes it on in some way, even if it's just by being in a better mood and therefore treating the people around them with more kindness than usual. Send someone a kind message. Give a small gift. Make something for someone. Tell someone how much they mean to you. There are so many ways to brighten someone's day. I have to thank you all for being here. You've made my day. Here are some ways. One, see yourself for who you are. Your journey to becoming a better person starts with understanding who you are at your core. This is about becoming more in tune with your deeper self so you recognize what riles you up, what makes you happy or sad. How do you deal with your emotions? How do you react when life goes astray? Two. Forgive and let go of anger. When we forgive, we let go of anger and hostility that eats away at our happiness and clouds our mind. Forgiving someone who has hurt you empowers you to let go of the pain from the past. It doesn't mean you forget what happened. Rather, it means you learn to release resentment and anger, which would otherwise be a burden on your mind and heart. To give. It's true, it works. Accept responsibility. Stop blaming others when things don't go right. A key element in growing as an individual and becoming a better person is learning to accept personal responsibility for your actions, including your behaviors, emotions, and failures, everything you have control over. Four, admit when you're wrong and apologize. When we apologize, we show empathy for the wrong person. We acknowledge our mistakes. When we truly try to make amends, we show humility and compassion for those we have hurt. 
This can disarm those who mis we mistreated and to heal their emotional wounds, but it can also help us heal. It's impossible to move beyond a mistake until we admit it to ourselves and to others. Five, be a good listener. Listening to others and really hearing them out with an open mind is one of the best things you can do for another person and for yourself. It shows the speaker that you value their opinion. It allows you to develop closer connections to others and hear perspectives you might otherwise dismiss. Be polite. Being polite is a small act of kindness we can do for everyone we come across. It is not a trivial thing. There is power behind saying thank you and please, giving someone a warm greeting or taking time to make small talk. These little things instill positive feelings in those around you, especially when you first meet. Different situations will call for different levels of politeness and formality. Seven, have respect for others and yourself. Being respectful of others is a golden rule if we want to become better people, and it also relates to basically every point on this list. It goes beyond treating others with good manners and listening to them, although those are important elements of respect. Respect is also about acknowledging differences in a cordial way. Eight, set goals for yourself. Goals give us focus and a way to measure our progress. Goals motivate us to stay on track. Start by writing your goals down. Those who write down their goals and dreams are more likely to achieve them. Nine, live with integrity. Personal integrity is a cornerstone of who we are and what we stand for. Integrity is part of our moral foundation, the principles and ideas we value and hold dear. Integrity is our personal compass, and it will shape the kind of person you become over time. 10, recognize opportunities to grow and change. Life is filled with unexpected twists and turns we can't predict. We can't help but be a little scared of change because the unknown is always a little frightening. That fear can hold us back and without realizing it, you may be stunting your growth personally and professionally. Allowing yourself to grow and evolve over time is a necessary part of life and part of the journey you are on. 11, be a part of the community. Community can be a geographical location where people live, play, and work but it can also be a virtual space where people connect through shared ideas, values, beliefs, and needs. However you define community, it's important that you find ways to be part of a larger group, and you may even par be part of many different communities depending on your interests and backgrounds. 12, embrace the journey. Remember, this is an ongoing journey. Our actions, how we live, how we spend our, li our time, those things all add up. Recognize that not everything in life is linear. Sometimes we must go backward to go forward. Along the way, we must learn to appreciate what we have, to have gratitude for all life has given us. Amen. I usually end with a poem of my own, but thanks to Sharon, she handed me this poem and it just it just hit the it just hit it just right. It's a, a poem by Zelda Zieselman and it's from her book Laughter, Love and Lunacy and it was published by ZC Publications. It's called Moment of Madness. Fate unknown for travelers in freedom's air, for innocent people within city square, for rescuers, medics, or others who worked. None had a warning, callous maniacs lurked. For out of the blue sky aimed two passenger planes. New York's World Trade Center belched black liquid flames. When terrorists attacked one September morn, at three minutes past nine, evil war was born. Jets crashed tallest buildings, top floors at first pass, sent forth reams of paper, sky glittered in glass. Souls leaped out of windows through blistering crust. Folks staggered down stairwells below impacts thrust. 
as crowds shrieked in horror, surreal time elapsed. In less than one hour, North Tower collapsed. Smoke rumbled and tumbled like snowstorm waves at sea, enveloping people in dust and debris. Run for your lives, it's coming down, someone yelled, as slivers and cinders and acrid grit swelled to cumulus clouds that eclipsed morning sun. Boats to New Jersey carried crowds on the run. A stunned New York's mayor rushed down to Wall Street, closed bridges and subways, but not Harbor Fleet. Then South Tower crumbled, besieged Wall Street choked. Onlookers stumbled, their throats filled with smoke. Crews raced to drown, ground zero to listen for sounds. Dogs sniffed for lost heroes. Paws burned on hot mounds. Steel skeletons loomed where a thousand hands groped, where men raised old glory as a symbol of hope. A third hijacked plane hit the Pentagon. Vice President was led out of Washington. Fourth jet in Pennsylvania bore earthing whole when passengers fought back their signal, let's roll. All planes in the air were rerouted to fly to Canadian ports. Air Force owned bare sky. Fear and fury felt on America's shore. Terror dealt by terrorists, Bush declared war. As loved ones were found, one by one, each one raised, in flag-mantled caskets saluted and praised. Nations burned candles to grieve thousands who, thousands who died in a moment of madness, their future denied. I think that says it all.
judgment seat.